Hey everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. How are you doing today? I hope you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. Let me start this video by apologizing for how I look because I don't have any makeup on. My hair is a little crazy. I'm wearing a big sweatshirt. I didn't really have time to fix all that up because I was just inspired to pop up and make a video because I'm kind of going through something currently in my life and I, it would be too strong to say it's a struggle of any kind because it's not, but it's one of those lessons that I am super great for, grateful for because there is just so much to learn as I'm going through it. And so I thought I would share with you about this. And what's prompting me to share this is that there is a person who I used to know in my life who, for whatever reason, just doesn't like me and really refuses to see me as the person that I, I believe and know myself to be. And as a result has gone on kind of a campaign of judgment and maligning me. And it's, and apparently this has been going on. I haven't talked to this person in like, I think it's three years. It could be two, but I think it's three years. And I, I, you know, I've gone on to do many things in my life and I, I really don't think about this person very much. And I, wish them nothing but love and with compassion, just hope that they're happy. But apparently this entire time, they've kind of gone on a bit of a campaign against me. And only because there are people out there that love me, have I been informed from time to time that there's like a, a, a bit of an escalation going on with this person and me. And it is what it is. Like, I don't, I don't know why. And I can't really comment for what anybody else is going through or why they think that way. But this whole thing is reminding me of just some really awesome truth and knowledge that I wanted to drop on you. And the first truth and knowledge is that we cannot take anything personally. And of course, I learned that from Don Miguel Ruiz, who wrote the book, The Four Agreements. And that book literally changed my life. And I've sent it to many people and really asked them to read the whole thing, but especially chapter two, don't take anything personally, because what I learned from that shifted my whole perspective on people and relationships, especially relationships with folks who criticize you and judge you and malign you and just never seem to accept you no matter how hard you have tried. And to sort of paraphrase and sum up what Don Miguel Ruiz talks about in this book, and taking things personally is that by the time somebody's judgment of you, spoken judgment of you, gets to you, meaning you hear it, you read it, you feel it. By the time that happens, that judgment, those words have gone through such an extensive personal filter and system, meaning that person had to think that thought. That person had to contextualize that thought and then filter that thought and concept of you through the structure and the system of them. Everything passes through the instrument before it goes anywhere outside of it. It must. And so if someone is saying something about you, that has everything to do with who they are. It passes through the filtration of their belief system or lack thereof. It it passes through the filtration system of their character, their integrity or lack thereof. It passes through their judgments. It passes through their life experiences, their past trauma and abuses. It has to go through them. And that stuff makes up who we are before it can even be spoken and organized and delivered unto you. This is such a profound reality that we must realize that by the time we hear those words, they have nothing to do with us whatsoever. In fact, they more resemble the person saying them than they do us. They're more about them and what they think and what they believe and how they feel than anything to do with us. To understand this is freedom. Freedom from judgment, freedom from criticism, free, freedom from feeling persecuted by other people because they're not actually interacting with you as you are. They're act interacting with a version of you that they see you to be. And the only way this can really ever hurt you or impact you, the Four Agreements goes on to tell us, is if we agree with their assessment of us. 
For example, if they're saying things about us and maybe they're hitting on some insecurities or some things about ourselves that we really don't want to reveal or we really don't know about ourselves. And then we say, you know, maybe they're right. Maybe what she thinks about how I look, maybe that's right. Maybe that's how I look to people because it's tapping into inner concepts and distor distortions of self within us. And then we agree with it. And we say, yeah, they're probably right. I probably am never going to get that job. I probably never will be successful. I never will lose or gain this weight. I never will be attractive enough for this person. I never will have children. And we, we agree with it. Now, when we agree with someone else's judgment or definition of who we are, we literally ingest the energy of this. Don Miguel Ruiz likens this to taking poison and likens this to being under a black magic spell because now all their stuff, the system of who they are that came up with the judgment in the first place, now that's in my stuff. Now that's me believing it. And now it's going to shift how I feel about myself. And now it's going to get me off my game. And now I'm going to doubt myself and my place in this world because this person is saying something that I have agreed with. Sometimes we actively agree with things. Someone says, you look like this, you look like that, and we're insecure about it. And so we just agree with it and we perpetuate it. We feel worse and worse about ourselves. While other times we unconsciously, we energetically agree because somewhere in the shadow of who we are, there exists a pattern that mirrors this judgment from someone else and their words, which is just energy anyway, these are just energy anyway, impact this pattern, triggering it, activating it, and causing us to unconsciously agree because somewhere deep inside of us, we have this belief of self already. But... What happens if we do not agree? What happens when somebody tells you who you are and tells you what your limitations are and what your potentials are and where you can go, and where you can't go? What happens when somebody says that to you, but it has no power over you? You don't drink the poison. Black magic is not touching you. What happens is you become a fully empowered person. In fact, anytime anybody's out here criticizing me for anything, unless it's true, if they're defining me or criticizing me or gossiping about me or maligning me, it's always for me a reminder about exactly who it is that I am. Oh, isn't that interesting? They can't see me. Oh, isn't that interesting? They don't feel me. They don't feel my heart. And this leads me to the next thing that I wanted to talk about in this video today. I actually made an Instagram post about this recently, and I put up a graphic. And in the graphic, it said, we are having one conversation in two different dimensions. Oh, can you feel that? And have you ever experienced this? Have you ever been trying to talk to somebody about something, but they just don't seem to get it? They, they just won't budge about anything. They just won't see your point of view. And you feel like you continue to have to defend yourself or defend your position. But no matter what you do, they are just not in the space of that. That's because you're coming at it from do, two different frequencies, truly. One of the most powerful things my friend Vibhika told me many years ago is, is that, well, she was talking about an experience with somebody else, but she's like, we're not having the same experience. We're in the same interaction, don't get me wrong. We're in the same room, but we're not having the same experience. Because I'm coming at it from here, and this person is coming at it from there. And I would suggest to you that this is a vibrational variation. And let's take it one step further. I would suggest to you that this is a dimensional disparity. Meaning, sometimes... We are coming into an interaction from a place of good intent, from a place of purpose, creativity, and love. But no matter what, even though we're in this higher frequency or higher dimension, if you will, no matter what, the person we are interacting with is tethered to the lower octaves of 3D. Can I get a witness? They are tethered to their mindset. They are tethered to their vibration, and they just can't connect with it. You're having one conversation, but y'all are occupying two different dimensional spaces. And this gets me to my final 
point, which is about the nature of light. Have you ever been somewhere, maybe a room, maybe a party, and somebody walks into that room and just changes the vibe of it? Truly, they become the life of the party. Like the lights have turned on, like their joy is infectious. Their, their mindset is attractive. There's something about this person that causes all ships to rise to this level. Like we all, our vibration rises with the vibration of this person. And likewise, have you ever been in a space having a, a wonderful time when in comes Debbie Downer or like Pigpen from the Charlie Brown cartoons and he always had like that negative cloud was it pig pen or was it linus one of them had like this dark cloud of energy above their head i think it was pig pen but they walk in and when they do everybody everybody gets a little quiet everybody gets a little negative like the vibe just shifts people are carriers of energy and here's the thing about high frequency we could very easily and should call this light because that is what it is it is a type of energy a type of divine energy. When a person who is embodying the light at a high frequency enters into a room with people, most people aligned to light or curious about light and divine nature and God and attracted to such things, most people are attracted to that higher frequency. They want to be around it. They, they're the ships that seek to rise. But Every now and again, you will find that one person who doesn't like the light at all. In fact, they're antagonized by that light. It annoys them. Her happiness annoys me. Who does she think she is to walk in here and be the life of the party? Wearing that dress, talking all this stuff, mindset, this, that, God, this, that. That annoys me. John 1.1. 1, 1. And the light shines into the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Let's take that one step further, shall we? And the light shines into the darkness and the darkness cannot even conceive of it, doesn't understand it, doesn't get it. That's foreign. I don't like it. We hate what we do not know. And the light shines into the darkness and the darkness is literally antagonized by it. This is why Happy, bubbly, loving people piss off people who have a lot of shadow, unresolved and unhealed. This is why spiritual people, fine-tuning people, refining people, people in the pursuit of alignment and divine concept of self annoy the hell out of people who aren't about that, don't have a focus on it, and are not ready to do that kind of work. They are much more comfortable to be in their habits of judgment and negativity and in their habits of self-indulgence and mood indulgence. Let's, that's a whole nother video. We got to talk about mood indulgence, people, because too many of us are indulging negative moods and we're creating from there. That's another video. Some of these people, they don't want to let go. They don't want to adjust and shift. And so instead, they're antagonized. And out of this vibrational feeling, they antagonize. And they will never see the good in you. They will never see the heart of you. They don't want to. You make them uncomfortable. Something about you shines very clearly into the instrument, into the system, into the person that they are. And they're not ready. They're not ready for the light there yet. They don't know how to process it. They don't want to look at themselves in the light or their trauma or their experiences. They don't want to be accountable also for their own creation in this life. People like, have you ever met people like this who are essentially like free radicals, just bumping into things and wrecking things and causing problems and detonating relationships and judging people and making it all very negative? They don't, they don't really want to change. And they're creating from that space. They're making everybody else bummed out too. Everybody else is getting angry too. Everybody else is getting judgmental too. How's that working for you? Are you judgmental? Are you a gossip? Do you default to looking for the flaws in people and not necessarily trusting motivations and looking for all the ways that it could go wrong or it is already wrong according to you, the paragon that is you. Like, let's, come on, stop. Let's stop. We have to stop. 
to end. Let me go back to saying when I see this showing up in my life, it is a reminder of who I am. Oh, they can't see me. Oh, they can't feel this or they will not. They will not see me. They will not be with me here where I am. They cannot. And oh, how does that feel for them? And I have compassion because it's got to suck. Honestly, it's got to be hard being angry all the time and looking for flaws all the time and being out of the space of just peace with people and just giving people the benefit of the doubt and how lovely that feels. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you're trying the best that you can. And I love you. I love you for that. That feels really good. And so when this happens, it's a reminder of exactly who I am. I know who I am. I've been working on my concept of self, my divine nature, my higher self. I am that I am. And nothing you can say with your black magic potions and your poison. Nothing, nothing can infiltrate. I will not take the poison. I stand. I stand in the love and the power of who I know myself to be. And I was created in perfection by the God of creation who saw it to be fit to create me. Thank you. And I am a creator in this life. Oh, I'm so powerful. I can do whatever I want. I am beautiful. I am lovely. I am a creator, born of the creator, born of the creator. Amen. That is who I am. Thank you for reminding me of that. And I will pray for you that one day we can meet in a space and really see and feel each other. I love you guys. Have a beautiful weekend.